Hello everyone, and welcome to Homestead Gardens. My name is Zach, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the world that is crepe myrtles, why we love them, and which one will work best for you at home today. Lagerstremia, or also known as crepe myrtle, is a variety of deciduous trees that has over 50 different genuses, uh, popularly known for its multi-trunk growth habit, array of colors, long bloom time, great fall color, and of course the attractive exfoliating bark which adds year-round interest for the tree. One of the questions I am commonly asked here in the nursery is how do I tell the difference between a tree type or shrub type crepe myrtle? One of the main things to focus I think on our crepe myrtles is the max height of the tree itself as most of them will have multiple trunk habits branching that goes from the top of the tree to the base of the tree and again varying max heights. One variety that I would mention would be our pokemoak, which will grow to be about two to five feet tall and wide at its maturity, staying nice and short. Uh, we also have coral magic, which is another variety that will grow to be about six to 10 feet tall and wide at its maturity. And then of course there is the Natchez crepe myrtle, which is the lovely white bloom behind me here, which will grow every bit of 20 feet or more at max height and canopy spread at its maturity. Another question I'm commonly asked is what colors are there in the way of crepe myrtles? While most people think about bloom color, I know, think another thing to mention that is very nice is that there are also bronze tripe crepe myrtles with a nice deep purple leaf, such as my favorite, Lunar Magic, in the back, having a wonderful contrast with that nice white bloom and that dark purple leaf. And then of course there are the green leaf varieties, which most of us are more familiar with, as these have been around on the market a little bit longer. As far as your bloom colors, there are a lot that are blooming white, as well as different shades of pink, red, and now purple has been added to the mix, which is a nice contrast as well. Uh, as for planting your new crepe myrtle, one thing I would mention is that width is more important than depth. So while you can generally match the depth of the pot of the crepe myrtle that you have purchased in the ground, you want to dig the hole twice as wide as possible. Once you've done that, go ahead and add your Biotone Starter, which is a great root developing fertilizer and also an organic, which everyone loves. Then you will add the root ball of your crepe myrtle into the center of that hole you have dug, gently roughing up the sides of that root ball to help point the new roots outwards rather than straight down. Then you will start backfilling the soil that you have dug out, adding in a 50-50 mix of a compost material, such as the Coast of Maine lobster compost that I have here with me, but any compost that you have at home would probably work just as well that you're familiar with. Once you have then filled up the hole, add a nice layer of mulch to help keep your weeds at bay and also maintain moisture for your newly established tree and make sure to water it in when you're done. Crepe myrtles are generally very water dependent on their first year of being planted, but after a couple of years, you can generally take a step away and let mother nature take care of the rest of the work for you. Uh, it is a very hardy, hardy tree once it's become established, which is why you see them very commonly used along roadsides and in just about any yard that you pass, just because they're such a beautiful tree. So thank you again for joining me today, and I hope that you will stop in on our next video where we're going to talk a little bit more about overall care, how to keep your new crepe myrtle happy, and again, how many more you can add into your landscape. Thanks, see you next time.